Hello, my name is Dr. Robert Bob DiSilvestro. I have a very diverse background. I have a PhD in biochemistry. I was a professor of nutrition for 34 years, and I've worked some with human behavior and marketing. And from this diverse perspective, I say God is a coordinator. A lot of people say God's a designer, and that's true, but being a coordinator is a particularly high level of being a designer. Let me illustrate the difference. I can look at a printer and say, that's designed and that's impressive design. But if it's a wireless printer, it has to work with a computer, the internet, an internet provider, and a router. All of them have to work together. That's coordinated design and that's really impressive. I see that kind of coordinated design in biology and I see it in human behavior. Let me give you a few examples of the many processes that have to come together in order to make a collagen that has pretty much any function. First off, the backbone has to be made in a very unique way. One collagen researcher said that to assemble this backbone just from random processes would have to overcome ridiculous odds if there's no input, but that's not enough. Then there's two enzymes that have to come along and modify certain parts of the collagen and leave alone most, most other proteins. These enzymes also have to bring vitamin C into the picture and it has to interact in a very specific way. That gets collagen to the point where it takes the shape that the three strands can wrap around each other, but that's not enough either the strands have to be glued together. They're glued together by an enzyme that contains copper. That requires an elaborate process of getting copper to this enzyme, but not having it wreak havoc in the rest of the cell. And this enzyme then has to work on just certain parts of collagen, ignore most other proteins, and start the process of gluing the strands together. But even the enzyme is not enough. Once the enzyme starts the gluing process, everything has to be lined up just right so that the rest of the gluing process can take place. I could keep going, but hopefully you get the idea here that a lot of processes have to coordinate together to make a functional collagen. How could this happen? People in evolution might say, well, these processes just happen to come together at the right time. But totally random chemical reactions and mutations can't think ahead. So maybe something could happen where one of these processes came about. But that process would be pretty useless without the others. How is it that these processes all turned up at the same time in the same place to make collagen? In my opinion, that's strong evidence for design, and I think God is that designer and that coordinator that put these processes together. Let me give you another example out of biology. There's one kind of cell in the body that makes insulin, but then in another part of the body, in fact, a lot of other parts of the body, there has to be cell receptors to take in that insulin and have it cause the body to keep blood sugar in control. So we have to have coordinated regulation and interaction between one part of the body and the other. That is truly amazing to me. This comes into play a lot with drug design. I've done a little bit of research in this area and I know that it's very hard to design drugs that don't throw systems out of balance because in the human body, we have to have many systems be coordinated for the body to work at its best. So when drugs are designed, even by pharmacologists with a lot of intelligence and a lot of technology, we often get side effects because it's very hard to affect one part of the body without messing up something else. So if pharmacologists and all this technology with all this intelligence have a hard time keeping the body coordinated, how can we believe that random processes could do a better job and create a body with such great coordinated function? Human interactions show this too. As I mentioned earlier, I've done some work in marketing. The early church was a marketing loser. It had no money, no military backing, no political might. 
and the early church spread a message that was centered on a physical impossibility, that Jesus died and rose again and came back from the dead. And yet the church spread so well. I think that's a miracle and shows that God really had a, an effect on people's hearts. But there were also a number of circumstances that came together at the same time, and I believe that God orchestrated these to help the spread of the early church. For example, in the ancient world, it was very common to have a lot of wars going on. This was a time where there was relative order in the Roman kingdom. Yes, the Roman army sometimes put down some rebellions, but there weren't long, widespread wars going on. There was order that allowed the church to go out and spread. <clears throat> also, for that time period, there were really good roads and systems of communication that were unusual for that time of history, and that helped the early church spread. Also, among certain people at that time, messianic expectation was very high. The Jewish people were thinking, I think it's time for a Messiah to come along. So the early church was able to take advantage of that and at least convince some people that Jesus was the Messiah. Also, the Roman culture that was prevalent at the time really contrasted Christian behavior. So Christian behavior could stand out as very different from the Roman culture and that attracted a lot of people. Also, one of the competing spiritual views at the time was that of the traditional Jewish people. The early church was composed of both Jewish people and non-Jewish people. But for centuries, the Jewish people had done sacrifices as a symbolic way of getting a payment for sin. Now, the Christian church is coming along and saying that Jesus, when he died and was resurrected, he became the real sacrifice, not the symbolic one. He became the real sacrifice for sin, and those symbolic sacrifices were no longer needed. But they were still going on. Well, in that generation, the Romans came in because some of the Jewish people had agitated them. The Romans came in, destroyed the temple. That was the end of sacrifices. Now, I don't think God delighted in seeing Jewish people killed or the Romans coming in and destroying the temple, but he knew it was going to happen. So the timing to send the Messiah just before that was perfect because now the Christians could say Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice and this competing system of symbolic sacrifices was knocked out of the picture. So God orchestrates processes in biology and he orchestrates processes in human behavior for his purposes. Therefore, I say that God is a coordinator.